Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, I'm proud to present an up close and personal in depth look with the 2016 Infiniti QX80 Limited. Probably one of, if not the nicest, full size SUVs I've ever had the pleasure of driving. As always, this is going to be a detailed in depth review of the QX80. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, take it on a thorough road test, and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, let her run. Remote start also comes standard. A remote smart key entry system comes standard, so as long as you keep the key fob in your pocket, you can hit the little chrome button on the driver and passenger side door handle to lock and unlock the vehicle. Two beeps indicate locking, one beep indicates unlocking. The Limited is only available in a handful of colors, three of which are unique to this particular model. Our tester is finished in Hermosa Blue, which is a new color option for 2016. Inside, the Limited features signature truffle brown semi-aniline leather upholstery with diamond quilting, silver contrast stitching, and piping. The Limited stickers for $88,850 and comes with every conceivable option you can put on a QX80. We'll discuss more detailed pricing a little bit later in the video. To start, make sure you have the key fob within the interior, then simply put your foot on the brake and hit the dash mounted button to go. The QX80 features engine speed sensitive rack and pinion steering with hydraulic power assistance. The overall ratio is 19.7 and it takes 3.5 turns to lock. The turning diameter is 41.6 feet. It's routed through a 4 spoke multifunction steering wheel that with the Limited is wrapped in super soft semi aniline leather versus the leather and wood combination in standard models. There's silver accent stitching circling the wheel, silver controls and grip bolsters at 10 and 2. The steering is light and relaxed, lending a lot of comfort and ease of use when piloting around such a large vehicle. In fact, like the 2015 Escalade I drove a while back, the QX80 drives like a smaller SUV once you get used to the dimensions. In other words, it's very easy to navigate. You might not expect something like this to be poised through the corners, but with our tester's hydraulic roll mitigation system, it will surprise you by how good it is relative to its size. We'll discuss that more in depth later in the video. When it comes to making the drive relaxing, the Infiniti QX80 does its job very well. Power is delivered to either the rear or all four wheels through a 7-speed automatic transmission. It features adaptive shift control, a variable lockup torque converter, and manual shifting ability. In fact, when changing gears manually, performance is enhanced when needed with downshift rev matching, smoothing out the transitions and eliminating unpleasant lurching. Introduced for 2011, the 7-speed replaced the previously used 5-speed automatic. In addition to helping deliver improved fuel economy, it also led to smoother, more refined and responsive operation. Hill Start Assist is standard. When placed in reverse, the limited standard around view camera system activates, giving you a variety of views around the vehicle and making parking almost a cinch. The console shifter is wrapped in leather, highlighted by contrast stitching and chrome accented amongst a silver and chrome shift housing. Also standard on the Limited, the otherwise optional Infiniti all-mode four-wheel drive system features an auto mode as well as four high and four low modes routed through an elegant knurled rotary dial in the center console. As with similar systems, it disperses torque between the front and rear wheels as necessary based on road conditions and traction requirements. It's primarily rear biased but can send up to 50% of the torque to the front if needed. To the left of the dial is a snow mode that modifies engine and transmission behavior to maximize traction when driving on snowy or slippery areas. To the right is a button labeled Tow Mode for better performance when towing, such as holding gears between shifts. At the rear of the dial is your traction control system. So let's go ahead and flip on the fully adaptive automatic LED headlamps, LED fog lamps, and the hazards. 
All four windows are fully automatic, while the front two windows feature acoustic laminated glass. So now let's go ahead and check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the vehicle will chime a few times to let you know it's lost detection in the proximity key fob. The full-size Infiniti QX is currently in its second generation following a complete redesign for 2011, which introduced new styling, a new platform, a significantly upgraded interior, greater performance, and overall efficiency. Since then, it's received a few updates here and there, but the most significant additions came last year with the new Ultra Luxury Limited package and a subtle exterior refreshing. The refresh included new, fully adaptive LED headlamps and LED fog lamps, along with new 20 and 22 inch wheel options. The grille insert up front was restyled, featuring a new color and distinctive mesh pattern, along with a more aggressive looking front fascia. At the rear is a new stainless steel bumper protector. First launching back in 2004 is the QX56, it was a higher end counterpart of the Nissan Armada, similar to how the Lincoln Navigator was based on the Ford Expedition or how the Cadillac Escalade drew its roots from the Chevrolet Tahoe. Not much was different between the Nissan and Infiniti as they shared identical platforms, powertrains, and even styling to a degree. While the Armada has continued relatively unchanged for over a decade now, Infiniti took the QX56 in a different direction with the 2011 redesign, creating a much more competitive and well-rounded offering. For starters, it no longer shares a platform with the Titan-based Armada. It's now based on the Nissan Patrol, a premium flagship SUV sold in international markets as a competitor to the Toyota Land Cruiser and the Land Rover Range Rover. The QX is less about extreme off-road ability like the Patrol, but it still offers the towing, interior room, and comfort buyers expect in this class. Compared to its predecessor, overall length grows by 2 inches, width expands by 1.1 inches, while height drops by 2.9 inches. The new wheelbase is also 2.1 inches shorter. When Infiniti changed up its naming strategy for 2014, the QX56 was renamed the QX80, positioning it above the QX50, QX60, and QX70 as Infiniti's largest and most luxurious SUV. It's available in two basic flavors, the $63,250 QX80 rear-wheel drive and the $66,350 QX80 all-wheel drive. On top of that, the QX80 Limited, which comes standard with all-wheel drive, starts out at $88,850. You can almost consider the Limited as a separate model, not just because of its $22,000 premium, but because it offers a number of unique luxury and styling appointments throughout, putting it right in the midst of other premium full-size offerings such as the Cadillac Escalade Platinum, Mercedes-Benz GL550, and more. Similarly equipped, the QX80 slots in between the competition as it's more expensive than a Navigator Reserve or a loaded Audi Q7 Prestige, but it undercuts the Escalade and GL550 by around $3,000 to $4,000. Styling enhancements for the Limited include darkened inner lenses for both the headlamps and tail lamps, dark chrome A-pillar covers, and six exterior colors as we discussed earlier, three of which are exclusive to the Limited. The rest of the exterior chrome across the front and rear faces and side profile also feature a darkened treatment, along with unique wheels and stainless steel running boards. The latter features rubber grips and full-length LED lighting at night to automatically illuminate as you walk up with the key fob. For me, this is one of the best looking full-size luxury SUVs currently available. There's a lot of fine detailing and dare I say beautiful bodywork. The fender vents are even functional. It looks and feels expensive, something I think is quite important in this segment. The styling is far more curvy and sculpted than the Escalade and Navigator, both of which still share a good bit of their designs with the vehicles they're based on. While the QX80 shares many elements with its international cousin, I think it's the most attractive in this form and highly unique in our market. Despite being an older design compared to the all-new Escalade, the QX80's outward appearance still looks as fresh as if it was launched last week. The QX80 Limited comes standard with these 14-spoke 22x8-inch alloys that are wrapped in 275.50 all-season tires that can help hold between 0.7 and 0.75 g of lateral acceleration. Infinity describes the wheels as dark chrome, but in person I think they have more of a satin graphite finish, with maybe a touch of bronze in certain light. They look quite good with the rest of the exterior appointments. It stops from 60 miles an hour in about 130 feet thanks to a four-wheel internally ventilated disc braking system measuring 13.78 inches at each corner with twin piston calipers in front and single piston calipers in the rear. Four-channel, four-sensor ABS is standard along with brake assist and electronic brake force distribution. As far as the suspension, the QX80 uses independent double wishbones at each corner with coilover springs and either front and rear stabilizer bars or the available hydraulic body motion control system. 
The Limited comes standard with the latter, which instead of the stabilizer bars, uses interconnected hydraulic fluid to constantly manage roll stiffness as it detects you moving through a corner while giving you a greater degree of control between compression and rebound for a smoother ride. The system can even detect behavior that would indicate you're off-roading, allowing for greater wheel articulation and less roll stiffness. The flexibility all happens in the background without any effort from the driver. I haven't driven one with the stabilizer bars, but the Limited was one of if not the best riding body on frame SUVs I've driven in a while, even though it had the 22 inch wheels. The suspension feels cushy and somewhat floaty over minor undulations. Some may like that, some may not, I'm one of the former. Through the corners, it's hard to overcome the laws of physics, but the QX80 handles itself pretty well. The rear suspension also features a supplemental air spring that functions as a load leveler to maintain the ride height if you're carrying a load of passengers or towing something. Speaking of, it can tow upwards of 8,500 pounds via a standard 7-pin trailer harness plug and connector. If you decide to take the road less traveled, approach, breakover, and departure angles are 20.9, 20.7, and 22.3 degrees respectively. Ground clearance is 9.2 inches. Overall length is 208.9 inches with a width of 79.9 inches and a height of 75.8 inches. Wheelbase is 121.1 inches while curb weight for the all-wheel drive version is around 5,888 pounds. 52% of that weight rides over the front. The 2016 QX80 is powered by an all-aluminum 5.6-liter V8, featuring dual overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, Infinity's variable valve event and lift technology, or VVEL, and direct fuel injection. The latter two features were added with the 2011 redesign. Displacement remains unchanged from earlier models. VVEL is a fancy term for their variable valve timing and lift system on the intake side, controlled hydraulically to enhance throttle response and overall efficiency. The revisions significantly boosted performance by 80 horsepower and 20 pound-feet of torque and decreased fuel consumption between 14 and 18 percent. The compression ratio is 10.8 to 1 accompanied by a maximum engine speed of 6,000 rpm. It develops a strong 400 horsepower of 5,800 rpm and 413 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 rpm. This leads to a 0 to 60 time of just a hair over 6 seconds, a quarter mile time of around 15 seconds and a top speed of 130 miles an hour. Power and performance in daily driving was more than enough. It was very competitive when it first came out and still offers strong acceleration and good overall response. Some competitors may make more horsepower, torque, or both, and there's nothing wrong with some extra power, but I never felt like the QX80 really needed any extra. I also think the engine sounded quite good under harder acceleration. Fuel economy leaves a little bit to be desired though. It's not awful, pretty much middle ground between a GL550 and an Escalade. Estimates range between 14 miles to a gallon in the city and 20 on the highway. Expect an average of around 16 miles to a gallon. Premium fuel is recommended for maximum performance and is held within a 26 gallon tank. Prior to this video, I hadn't had much experience with either the QX56 or the QX80, so I was quite excited when I received my chance to drive this for a whole week. Those who know me know that I've always really liked this segment, really full-size SUVs in general though. When I first climbed into this QX80 Limited, I was quite impressed, not simply because it was the most premium SUV Infinity has offered to date, but the quality of materials, the overall styling and attention to detail were some of the nicest I had ever seen in this class. It reminded me a lot of what you might see in a Bentley, chrome, leather, and wood galore. Granted, there's a lot of great options in this segment and we've checked out a number of them over the years, including the new Escalade, but the QX80 struck me as being different. Some of the interior elements in the Infinity, including the center stack, seem a bit outdated when looking at the competition, but it's important to note that this generation is now in its fifth model year. Despite a few extra buttons here and there and the lack of the latest gadgets and gizmos like massage seats and the digital instrument clusters, I still think it feels relatively fresh. Offering enough premium build quality, occupant comfort, and overall interior space to be a worthy competitor. That being said, the general ergonomics are pretty good. With the second row captain's chairs, the QX80 can seat 7 people or 8 with the no-cost bench seat. Unique appointments added with the Limited consist of the Truffle Brown semi aniline leather upholstery featuring quilted patterns across the seats, center console, and headrests. Silver accent stitching can be found throughout in addition to silver piping on the seats and center consoles. 
The Limited also adds matte finish open pore ash wood trim, illuminated door sill entry guards, and ultra suede headliner and pillars, leather wrap grip handles for all three rows, leather wrap speaker grills, plush ear floor mats with brown piping, and unique silver switch gear in the center console. Everything is wrapped in some form of soft touch material, especially the doors, which are downright cushy across the midsections. The locking glove box is damped and lined in soft touch material. As expected, there's a wealth of space. My favorite parts of the interior were the seats, which are incredibly soft and very supportive across your back. They're fully powered with two-way lumbar. The semi-aniline leather is silky smooth and the whole interior in general just coddles you like the fanciest of luxury sedans. The headrests and seatbelts are adjusting. The latter features automatic tensioning once fastened, while the powered mechanism retracts them automatically when unfastened. The steering wheel is powered tilt telescoping with heat and auto tilting. The latter is paired to the driver's seat's auto recall feature. There's plenty of airbags all the way around including two front, side curtain, and seat mounted airbags. There's no knee airbags though. There's no panoramic roof available, but a sunroof is standard. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds, both sitting still and on the road. Now let's go ahead and shut her up and check out some of the interior features. The QX80 comes standard with a premium Bose 13 speaker audio system, including two subwoofers, but this limited comes standard with the otherwise optional Bose cabin surround sound system with digital 5.1 channel decoding and 15 speakers with two mounted in the rear headliner. As expected, audio quality is excellent with powerful bass and crisp treble. It's all routed through an 8-inch touchscreen infotainment system, and you can also use a small rotary wheel in the center console to do the same features. Push up, down, left, and right, twist left and right, and push in to select an option. Of course, your side curtain airbags all the way around, the ultra suede contains down all of the pillars, and all of the grip handles located throughout the vehicle are wrapped in leather. You have a suede advisor with illuminated vanity mirrors and an auxiliary sunshade off to the far right. Auto Demi movie mirror with three position garage home link. And in the top stack, pretty simple, you have your interior illumination and reading lamps, hands-free Bluetooth microphones, padded sunglass container, as well as your SOS emergency roadside assistance. A fully automatic powered sunroof also comes standard. 
As far as the rest of the infotainment system features, most of them are located in that top stack there, but you also have some down below that correspond to your audio system. For example, you can activate your 360 degree camera system there and go between the different modes, your destination entry, map, route, system information, including real-time weather updates, traffic info, there's a back button right there to go to the previous menus, vehicle status, including climate control, what audio mode you have it set in, system settings, as well as dimming the screen or turning it off entirely. Down in the very bottom there's a voice button to repeat navigation commands if you have any active. No destination has been set. Within the navigation screen in the top right you have your digital clock, in the very bottom it shows you which audio setup you have playing as well as your inside temperature. Click the map menu and there's some more detailed settings including changing the view of the map, but you can play with this when you actually check it out in person. Pretty self-explanatory. As we continue down the center console, beneath the top stack in that little strip of chrome, you have your radio and media controls. AM, FM off to the left, XM, disc, audio, hands-free Bluetooth streaming, change the track, rewind, fast forward, seek, tune, all that kind of stuff over there, scan, as well as six preset stations. Here's an in-dash CD player, radio volume and power button, as well as tune, folder, and audio settings off to the right. Down towards the bottom you have your electronic automatic climate control system, it's actually tri-zone, so you have independent adjustment for the driver, passenger, and the middle row seats. Simple rotary knobs to either side, fan speed in the middle, off, changing the different zones, front and rear defrost, as well as recycling and one-touch automatic. Down in the very bottom you have your three-stage heated and ventilated seats for the front occupants, there's also heated seats for the middle row. A heated steering wheel, 12 volt power outlet, and these two buttons right here correspond to the power folding rear seats, so if you need somebody to get into the back and you didn't want to do it manually, you could just do it right here for convenience. The center stack is surrounded by premium soft touch material with the silver accent stitching that comes into the center console, blended into a bunch of tasteful chrome bright work. There's a little bit of storage right here with a USB port. Off to the right you actually have three cup holders. There's a fixed one right there, there's another one right here that has a removable sleeve for a larger drink or a thermos, something like that. Smaller thing right there, a little bit of chain storage and an extra power outlet. Open up the padded leather center console and you'll find a tremendous amount of space, all lined in felt. It actually has um, some extra media inputs right there if you needed to stream something to that system I believe, as well as activating the rear AC household outlet. The armrest also slides for extra comfort. As far as the steering wheel on the right hand side you have your cruise control and adaptive cruise settings where you can set the distance between the car in front of you, not to mention your lane departure warning and rear cross traffic alert activation. To the left are your radio controls, hands free telephone and voice commands. Please say call followed by a phone book name or say a category like navigation. You can push the talk switch to stop voice prompts and give a command at once. Remember to wait for the tone before speaking. If you push the phone button, it'll bring up the main menu for the telephone within the infotainment system. If you have one already connected, it'll connect automatically when you start the car. Driver's information controls located to the right of the instrument cluster. Go between trip computer, fuel data, and more. The interior lighting dimmer is off to the left. I also really like the instrument cluster, it's a nice comprehensive layout of gauges. Small driver information system in the middle, a cool textured pattern in the background with a little bit of blue lighting. There's a lot of chrome bright work, to the left hand side you have vehicle temperature and your voltometer, to the right you have vehicle fuel as well as oil pressure. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat space and amenities. Alright, so climbing in the back seat isn't too hard. I mean, no harder than any escalator and navigator. There are B pillar mounted leather wrap handles right here that you can use to hoist yourself on up if necessary. And the first thing that you'll notice, I mean, like we talked about in the front, 
this is one of, if not the nicest interior I've seen in this class. I mean, compared to the Escalade and the Expedition, I mean, this thing is just downright comfortable. And it's beautiful. I mean, the attention to detail that you see in this limited model is something that I would typically see in like a Bentley or something like that. I mean, it's, it's just beautiful. I mean, you close the door, everything is nice and solid. I mean, just about everything's wrapped in leather or soft touch materials or the ultra suede headliner. It's, it's such a sumptuous environment. I'm 5 foot 10 and with a comfortable seating position for myself in front, I mean obviously there's a ton of room, I mean well over half a foot, maybe even 8 inches or so of leg space give or take, headroom is probably three and a half, four 4 inches or so. I mean it's a very accommodating interior and it's not like you would expect anything else from a vehicle of this size. It's also immensely comfortable. I mean just like the front seats, the back seats have a similar style to them. They don't have quite as much lateral support across the side but there's a tremendous amount of lower back support. A lot of padding in the cushions. I mean it's so so comfortable. And the other thing too you can recline these seats. There's handles on top of here as well as the lower portion of the seat. It's a little bit easier if you're sitting here to grab the one on the side, but you can pull it and kick it back quite a good bit. Same thing goes with pulling it back forward if you wanted to sit a little bit more straight. But there's a few different steps you can customize it to your liking. Other amenities, you have your air vents mounted up in the headliner, which is nice, blows right on your face, and they are adjustable. There's actually two on either side, so you can change the angle if you want to point one down and one at your face, so you have a little bit of flexibility with that. Your interior illumination, reading lamps up top there, grip handles, coat hooks, as well as um, fully adjustable seat belts and headrests, just like you have in the front. I've always personally preferred captain seating compared to a bench seat. Even though you do get extra practicality with the bench seat, you still have an armrest and all that good stuff. This just seems more premium. It's more personal. You have like your own space on either side. And it seems more limousine like in this particular model. I mean, just because of the leather and the interior appointments and everything. In the middle, you have this handy center console, and like the rest of the interior, it's nicely appointed with the open pore wood. You have the high quality leather across the armrest with the silver accenting, the diamond quilting. Open it up, there's a lot of storage space. It's all lined in felt. Houses your headphones for the rear seat entertainment system. Up front here, you have two cup holders. And in the very leaning edge up here, you have a pretty deep storage well that goes in quite a bit. In addition to all of the padding across the door panels and a lot of storage in the lower portion, that's really about it. A nice environment, very comfortable, very roomy. If you're looking for something in this class, the QX80 is definitely something you're going to want to consider. So let's go ahead and hop in the back seat real quick and I'll show you how that's done. So like I said, there's a handle up top here and down below here. They both do the exact same function, either reclining the seat or folding it and tumbling it forward. If you want to gain access to the rear seat, we'll just go ahead and use the one up here. You pull it, bring it down, and it automatically basically tumbles itself. It's a very lightweight seat, very easy to use. You can put it back down, it'll lay flat, so if you put down the third row seat, you can load up cargo space all the way to the front. But to go ahead and put it back up, you have to recline it back, and there you go. When hopping into the third row, you can also use this B-pillar handle to make things a little bit easier. Again, the seats are very light, effortless. Just pull them down, back, and you're ready to go. One of the first things you're going to want to do back here when you climb in is to go ahead and put these headrests up for better head support, and they won't stick into your back. Otherwise, you just put them down for better visibility. As far as space back here, I have this seat back raked to what I believe is more of a normal angle comparable to the standard setting in the middle row. I'm 5 foot 10 and I'm a little bit cramped back here, not too bad, I mean I can sit back here just fine, but I only have about a half an inch of leg space and maybe about half an inch or so of head space. Of course that depends on the rake of this seat, if somebody brings it back all the way you're not going to have any leg space, so you're probably going to want to put it as far forward as possible, at least if you're my height. If you're over six feet you're probably not going to want to sit back here. Another pretty nice thing, and we'll talk about this a little bit more during the trunk portion, is that these back seats are actually powered, or at least the backrest. So you can push the little buttons on either side just ahead of the cup holders there to either bring the seat forward or backward. If you lean it back all the way, you can really kick back, I mean just like the front. You also get a whole lot more interior space. Now I probably have about two, maybe two and a half inches of leg space, and depending on where I put my head, 
and probably about the same in headspace. Of course, with the headliner kind of dips down right here, you lose a little bit, but um, it's definitely accommodating for a pretty good range of individuals. The amenities are pretty basic back here. You have two cup holders on either side, high quality leather, of course, with the perforations in the middle, leather wrap grip handles up top, which I really like, in addition to the um, roof matted vents. Comfort back here is definitely better than average, there's not a whole lot of support, and it feels pretty comparable to the Cadillac Escalade. You have a lot of padding in these seats, and I actually think they're a little bit more of a high quality design than the Escalade. Um, obviously, if you're shorter, you're going to have more room, you're going to be more comfortable and not have your knees right up so high, but um, yeah, not too bad at all. The QX80 comes standard with a full power lift gate that can be controlled fully from the key fob or by a button on the tailgate itself or a button on the underside of the dash. Like I said a second ago, the third row is fully powered, so you can recline it, you can independently adjust the seats in a 60-40 split fashion, or fold them flat for extra cargo space. Speaking of space, behind the third row seat, you have 16.6 .6 cubic feet, fold it down, you have 49.6 .6 cubic feet, and then fold down the middle row seat to have the full 95.1 cubic feet in total. There's brushed stainless steel entry guards, four cargo tie downs, the higher quality carpet mat, and a 12 volt power outlet out back. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2016 Infiniti Cube X80 Limited. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care guys.